Welcome back to Ahead of the Curve. I'm your host, Dr. Megan Teed, also known as the Scoliotherapist. And today I'm going to be talking about the connection between your gut and your spine. And this is a hot topic for a lot of people because they there's a lot of people that commonly have issues with their digestion and they often wonder, is it correlated to your scoliosis or not? I have some answers for you in today's episode, and I also have some common things that people struggle with with scoliosis in relation to their digestion, and also uh, some solutions and options for you to think about as far as ways you can help things feel a little bit better. And um, I want to start off by telling you a little bit about the results of an Instagram um, poll that I did the other day. And I asked, I gave several different categories. Uh, The first one was GERD. Second one was constipation. um, Painful gas was another one. And then the last option was all of the above. And the majority of people, it was very, very close. I will be honest. I had a lot of responses. Um, I will say the majority of people said that they struggled with constipation. And I will get to some of the reasons why in a couple of moments. So um, scoliosis, obviously, it affects your posture and your the way that you're holding yourself, positioning yourself can affect your digestion. So if you are even a person that does not have scoliosis and you have poor posture, it is likely that you also struggle with some element of poor digestion, whether that's GERD, um, whether that is um, constipation, painful gas, (laughs) all those things could be showing up in somebody that doesn't have the greatest posture and the way that they're holding themselves or a kyphosis. And we've talked about this before. And I talked about this in my episode relating to why scoliosis is painful. But if we consider your digestive tract, you have your esophagus, you have your stomach, Um, You have your small and large intestines, and then you have your colon, um, or they can kind of be interchanged as your intestines and your colon, but um, all of those elements are organs, and the organs in our body are like any other joint of the body. They need to be able to have the space to freely move and glide and slide over top of each other. And if you picture a scoliotic spine or a curved trunk, there are areas where the rib cage and the hip are closer together. There are areas where the rib cage and the hip are further apart and vice versa, Um, or all throughout the body. So even up and through the trunk, and the shoulders. So there are areas where one shoulder and one rib are closer together. There are also areas where one shoulder and and that same side rib cage are further away from each other. So on the areas that are closer together and more narrow, those particular organs that live underneath of that curve, they have less of ability to move and glide and slide over each other which is why learning how to create that internal strength in order to maintain an elongated elongated position is super important in allowing those organs to do what they were created to do. So um, first thing I'm going to talk about is how most people that have scoliosis that I have encountered, 
they tend to live in a state of fight or flight. So they're in a, a sympathetic state of their nervous system. So that means they're always very heightened and alert and maybe anxious, nervous. Um, there's a couple reasons for that. The One of the main reasons is due to the way that people with scoliosis tend to breathe. Um, instead of breathing from the diaphragm and having longer, slower inhalations and exhalations, we tend to have a higher respiratory rate and breathe more quickly. So that changes the chemical balance in our body that um, that also heightens your nervous system and increases your heart rate. And all of those things are not conducive to resting and digestion, digesting. So um, in order for us to digest our food very well, uh, we need to be in a calm and a restful state. So in order to facilitate that, um, you can alter that. That's the cool thing about um, breathing is you can easily manipulate the way that you're breathing in order to bring yourself into a parasympathetic state. And just lengthening your inhales and exhales, inhaling for a count of eight, holding your breath for a couple, couple of seconds, and exhaling for a count of 10 or 12, and then continuing that pattern can really help with bringing yourself into that state of rest and digest, that parasympathetic state. The second reason people with scoliosis have a difficult time with digestion is related to the spinal innervations of our digestive tract. And these are the sympathetic branches of the nervous system or of the, the spinal levels. They innervate different areas of the digestive tract. So we have T1 through T4 innervates the esophagus. And then we have T5 through T12, and that innervates the stomach. T9 through T10 innervates the small intestines. And T5 through T12 innervates the large intestines. And I know that if you have scoliosis, spinal fusion, um, and you're listening to this, you're usually, usually pretty well educated on the levels of the spine that are involved in your curve. And usually there is multiple curves happening in through the spine. So um, if you have a thoracic curve, then it's more likely that you may have some digestive issues related to more of the esophagus or the stomach. And then um, actually all of these are <laughs> thoracic related. So if your main curve lives in the thoracic spine or the lower thoracic upper lumbar, it, it's likely that this is playing some sort of role in the reason why you're having some trouble with digestion. Um, the third thing I would like to talk about is your splenic flexor syndrome. It is a condition that many people with scoliosis struggle with where gas gets trapped in that flexure. So where I'm talking about is if you visualize your large intestines, you basically have three elements of the large intestine. You have your ascending colon. So if you are just looking at your own body and you look down at your, your belly button, to the right of the belly button from the top of that pokey hip bone up to the bottom of your right rib cage, that is your ascending colon. And then you have your transverse colon, which 
go side to side from the right lower rib cage to the left lower rib cage. And then you have your descending colon that goes from your left lower rib cage to the top of your left hip. So the splenic flexure lives in that area where it's a transition from the transverse um, transverse colon to the descending colon. So at that little curve at uh, the front bottom portion of your left rib cage, that is the splenic flexure. And that is where a lot of people feel their painful gas, especially right after they eat. I'm going to talk about a few things that you can do to help alleviate those symptoms in a couple of moments, but just so you know, that is a very common condition for a lot of people that have scoliosis. So um, let, let me actually finish defining what the, the syndrome is. So the gas gets trapped in that transition zone of the transverse to the descending. And it occurs when regular movement of the colon is blocked in any way um, where the transverse colon transitions. So if you consider your curve and the rotation that you have of the curve, the side bending that you have of the curve, a lot of times that general area is around the apex of the curve or a transition zone of the curve where the curve is switching from going to the right to the left. So it has an effect on that splenic flexure. Uh, the, the next thing I want to talk about, or next reason that people with scoliosis have issues with digestion is from constant abdominal bracing. Maybe and bracing means sucking in your stomach. <laughs> and I was just talking with Carrie Green. Um, we've recorded a podcast that's actually coming out after this one, but we were talking about how gr growing up our moms were like, yeah, you know, if you always hold in your stomach, you'll always have flat abs. And what a complex that has developed for a whole generation, because I know that our parents are not the only ones, or our moms are not the only ones that have said that to us. And there's a lot of people that train that way. So as far as like physical therapists or personal trainers, they always are telling you to brace your abs for everything that you do. So unfortunately, that doesn't allow your organs to expand and contract the way that they need to in order to facilitate digestion. The other reason you might be bracing your abs is literally from wearing a brace and um, you just don't have the space within the brace to allow for that expansion and contraction to happen. And then the, the third reason would be from a spinal fusion potentially. So because uh, our digestive tract are really made up of tubes, a lot of tubes, our tubes within the body, they like to be stretched. And a great way to be able to stretch them is actually rotational movements. So for scoliosis specific exercise, Traditionally, for people that wear braces, for people that have a spinal fusion, you are not doing a whole lot of rotation throughout the day, uh, likely, if you are conscious and aware of that. So this can add to the feelings of constipation, um, painful gas, and poor digestion. And finally, I'm going to talk about GERD, which is basically um, basically acid reflux. And 
this is the only study that I was able to find in relation to scoliosis and digestion. Um, the study is actually called GERD and scoliosis study. And I will have this linked in the show notes, but the results of this study show that the left-sided large convex curve at the thoracolumbar or the lumbar spine. So that means at like your, your lower middle back or your lower back, um, especially when the Cobb angle was more than 30 degrees, was highly correlated with GERD. Therefore, the symptoms of GERD should be monitored in the elderly population with degenerative scoliosis. And I can infer that that's any scoliotic population that has their main curve, um, their main lower curve on that left-hand side. So um, the other reason that people with scoliosis tend to suffer more with GERD is because our thoracic spine is actually more extended or straight up and down, especially if you have been braced. This is the case. If you have a spinal fusion up in that area, that can kind of flatten your thoracic spine. And then just because of the rotation, if you haven't been braced, if you haven't had a fusion done, it can also cause a flattening of that area of your spine. And we only have so much space in order for our structures to live. And if you are in more of a, so if you're watching this, you can see, um, if you're listening to this, you can see what I'm doing with my hands, but normally our thoracic spine is curved like this if you don't have scoliosis. And then, what lays right on top of the front portion of your thoracic spine is your esophagus. So plenty of room to do whatever it needs to do. So when that area is flattened out, there's only so much space in that area and it can actually cause an impedance of your esophagus being able to stay expanded and help facilitate um, to help keep all of your foods down where it needs to be. So next I'm going to talk about So next, I'm going to talk about just some advice that I have in order to help some of these different conditions. Um, the, the first one to help with the splenic flexure, painful gas problem, and the constipation problem is to start incorporating some stomach massage into your routine. And there's actually a specific stomach massage that can help with that painful gas and that splenic flexure syndrome that um, I will tag in the show notes. Um, so you basically kind of go along that same tract that I was talking about. So you have your ascending colon, transverse colon, descending colon, and you kind of go in a pattern that follows that, that helps to kind of push the gas that might be getting stuck at that little splenic flexure. Uh, the other thing that can be really helpful with those two conditions is working on chewing your food enough. <laughs> and even if you don't have scoliosis, all of us in the West, we rush a ton when we're eating and we do not chew enough, which means we're inhaling and consuming, swallowing a lot of air. So ideally, we, depending on the structure of the food that you're eating, you want to be chewing at least 25 to 30 times per bite. And that might be more if we're eating something like steak. That might be less if you are eating ice cream or yogurt. 
So that is another way to help improve those painful gas conditions and the constipation condition. Constipation related, making sure that you're drinking enough water throughout the day. So um, I know that that can be hard to do, especially if you live in a warmer client. If you have conditions like um, any pelvic floor conditions where incontinence is an issue or a concern for you, um, work with a pelvic floor therapist, um, even Pilates instructors and some physical, like general physical therapists can understand how to help you with those things. But if you have access to a pelvic floor therapist and are struggling with that, please go see them. It may only take a couple of visits to address this, and there's no reason you should be purposefully dehydrating yourself throughout the day. But proper hydration allows things to be flushed through the system more easily um, so that you have better motility, not mobility. Motility means that it's movement of your food throughout your system more easily. And um, the, the last way that you can help with constipation or bloating and gas is to do some rotational movements. And I know that that might be impossible for you if you have a spinal fusion. That might be a little scary for you if you have scoliosis. But just trying to do some gentle rotational movements can help to kind of ring out those intestines and stretch those tubes the way that they like to be stretched to help facilitate digestion. Okay, and also uh, regular walks, elongation are very helpful. So um, I suggest walking after you have a big meal and not sitting on the couch and watching Netflix and tucking up in yourself stretching out and elongating, creating space in through your trunk so that things can move freely and digest well. Okay, and then uh, finally, my recommendations for um, people who are struggling with GERD are one, trying to restore that thoracic curve. And there's an exercise lying over top of the core just ball, the small squishy ball. You can do some breathing over that. That helps to facilitate more of that thoracic kyphosis, creating space for your esophagus. Um, also making sure that you're just paying attention to what you're eating. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, making sure that you're not overly consuming foods in high acidity like alcohol or coffee. And um, finally, just paying attention to the way that you're holding yourself throughout the day. So kind of if you are someone who um, has been told you have poor posture and you walk around pinching your shoulder blades together all day long, you're restricting the amount of space that you have for your esophagus. So focusing more on actually widening the shoulders away from each other or even just bringing them just a little bit forward can help create some more space for your esophagus uh, to be able to do its job and not feel like it's so restricted. So in summary... There, yes, there are reasons why people with scoliosis tend to struggle more with digestion than people without scoliosis, constipation, painful gas, GERD are all some of the ways that people struggle more with digestion. And there's plenty of ways that you can help those things improve. If you're interested in learning more about how you can improve those things through movement and through exercise, um, please reach out to me and schedule a discovery call and we'll figure out if it's a good fit to work together or not on your scoliosis. 
that's all I have for today. Until next time, I hope you stay well and stay ahead of the curve. Thank you.